Hello, everyone. Hello. Hi, everyone. We are live. We just had a little a little test, yep. um, and we started. But thank you so <laughs> much for uh, writing in the chat and yep. discussing with us. Um, so we just had a few minutes of tinkering around with everything, but we're all good to go now. So I'm Lucy. I'm the social media manager at Easy Weddings, and we're joined by Tom and Kate from White Clover Music in the middle there. Hi. And then we've got Amy, who is a very new Easy Wedding staff member. She's been on for only eight days. So from here on out, Amy will be running the webinars. I'm just here to help out for the moment. Um, it's really good to see everyone commenting in the chat. Please continue to do so. Um, and I guess we'll start with Tom and Kate and what they've been doing, where they come from, and what they do with their business at the moment. Um, yeah, so feel free to kick it off, guys. Cool. Well, hi, beautiful people. Um, yes, I'm Kate, my beautiful, wonderful husband, Tom. Hello. And we're White Clover Music. Uh, we're wedding singers who have grown to uh, MC, DJ, and pretty much uh, plan weddings. Um, so our business sort of graduated over the last 10 years. Uh, we've only really been White Clover Music uh, for about six and a half years. So That's we've been... Time. Yeah full-time for six and a half years and um prior to that we were called events sound sydney and we were just finding our feet and we were doing this part-time so it definitely grew and grew and um we really can't see ourselves doing anything else and in this current climate we understand that that's a, a pretty tricky thing uh for a lot of people to think that they could be and sustain a full-time uh, wedding business when things seem uncertain. So we really wanted to uh, get really uh, to grips with things with you. So if we can offer you any uh, advice or resources, if we can answer any questions today, we really, really want to do that for you. So if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box. It means a lot to us that you really get what you want out of today's talk. We're not going to do the usual thing that we do with a slideshow and a whiteboard and a, we don't want to do that. We just really want to talk to you and uh, yeah. make sure that uh, if there's anything you need to know, we can help you. Absolutely. Yeah, we do have some talking points and things like that, that we'd, we'd like to um, like to express and, and uh, have a few ideas and things that we can we can present to you guys. But um, yeah, we, we'd also love to be very uh, tailored to what you guys are, are, are after. And, and um, yeah, we're, we're really excited. Do you want to talk about Inside Vendor? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah. Inside Vendor is something we developed over the last uh, few years, uh, three years, actually. And it's just uh, free resources and free wedding network. We've got a lot of our Easy Weddings friends in that group as well. Um, just a, a lot of vendors who need to chat about things. So if you don't know what NCAT is, if you don't know what your contract should be, if you don't often business or haven't been to a certain venue before, if you want to post in there, well, that's a brain's trust of people who you can be open and honest with. So there's no yeah. silly questions. You can kind of go, oh, hey, guys, are we even permitted to have our coffee cart or drive our cars into this venue? Have you done it? People can say, yeah, we were there last week and they had cars and they had coffee cart and it was all good. So here's a contact number for the person and they're all really helpful. So jump into the Inside Vendor Network on Facebook um we also have a funny group as well called wedding vendor <laughs> memes yes. which is good for a laugh during these times so i didn't know they existed that's yeah. awesome it, it is uh it, it was it started off as kate and myself literally sitting in bed after a wedding like texting each other funny little memes that we created um and just laughing ourselves silly um late at night after weddings yeah and we decided, well, we should probably post a few of these. These are quite good. And so created a bit of a group and now it's um now we have quite a quite a few members from all around the world actually and it's quite it's quite funny. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, yeah. Um Brendan, I assume from something borrowed duo just asked, is that New South Wales based or are there suppliers from all states? So it's just wait, 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 are we talking about um inside, inside vendor? Inside think, vendor yeah. is Australia wide and it's looking to be worldwide uh, so we do have a couple of people in there from overseas mostly because they can assist any of our international planners so if planners are like oh no i have to do a wedding in new zealand and i haven't been there i don't know what the laws and stuff are mm -hmm. then we've got a few people from nz who like 
oh yeah, no, you can come and chat with me and I'll talk to you and give you our guidelines PDF. And it's just mm -hmm. a really helpful community. So, so definitely jump in there. Um, there are a lot of musicians in there because we go and lecture at universities and things like that and they jump in, which is fantastic. So for a lot of creatives who are, uh, kind of looking at equipment and specific things like that. You can yeah. really ask questions in there as well. So, yeah, we get a lot of um, celebrants asking questions about their equipment and stuff like that, which is really great. Really, um, you know, they should be researching um, the best equipment that they can that they can get their hands on and how to, yeah. you know. And, and you guys would know. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we um, very recently we did, or well, in the last couple of months, we did uh, um, a, a like workshop. a lecture workshop like a yeah a workshop with, uh, workshop. with, with a, a group of celebrants and we actually went through their equipment and uh how to use it and the best effective way to use it yeah so, so celebrant connect australia um they're a good little group too they were just wanting to do some uh more education uh for celebrants uh you know who are it, it can feel very lonely when you're doing business by yourself and we're very fortunate that you know we're, we're partners in business and some people have companies where they've got their all their staff coming in sometimes we get staff coming in or working via zoom uh but if you're a sole trader like we did that for years well i i did that and then tom did that independently for years before we were a thing and it, it can get really lonely and it makes you usually where you would go to the person next to you hey what do you think about this thing or you need a space to bounce ideas off each other and to also be provided with that knowledge and information and uh, these network groups are really really crucial to to the success and health of your business like uh it's like honestly the nearest comparison i can think of is making friends at uni if you don't have anyone to befriend at uni, even though it was like a very long time ago we're at uni, <laughs> um, it, it's hard to get through that degree by yourself. And it's the same in business. You need to be talking to each other uh, and networking because someone could say one thing that could change your whole business. And you go, I can do it that way. I mean, we were bringing probably five times the equipment until one person went, did you know you can just run this thing through this thing? And we went, oh, my God. We didn't know that. And that was like five years ago. So now we, you know, we still bring a truckload of equipment with us to weddings, but we set things up differently. So that shared knowledge is really, really important. Um, so we're all about fostering that kind of community as well. So uh, we really want to share knowledge because we don't really believe in competition so much uh, because there's a lot of weddings who don't actually, uh, you know, have enough vendors. Like I know it sounds insane, but there's what, what were the mm -hmm. stats from Easy Weddings? It was like 56,000 full time wedding vendors in the country, but there's more than 200,000 just Caucasian weddings, like your average yep. white girl wedding. I'm not even talking about like <laughs> the really interesting, amazing Lebanese, Greek, like, you know, weddings. Um, and so you, you look at that and you go, there's, there's enough weddings to go around. Or oh, there will be. Definitely. 100%. Yeah. Uh, Maybe not right now, but. In the we'll, we'll still sure. right now because yeah. we're we're getting booking we're getting inquiries for twenty twenty for the future yeah for sure but we're yeah. definitely taking bookings to the end of twenty twenty two and our business has been able to survive on deposits alone during this time due to the fact that we have the capacity to uh, look at our future and then book those dates so uh, our greatest piece of advice during this time is please. Definitely everyone, um, if you're looking to sustain your business during this time, you need to be looking at your calendar and looking at what dates in the future you can promote and, and how you can do that so you can lock in some weddings and um, keep things running. Yeah. What, when are you finding that couples are booking for? Like, is it just 2022? Is it 2021 mm. as well? Yeah. Like, no, when, getting, when do people feel confident this. enough to book? We're getting bookings for this year. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Still, and, and of weekdays and things, the the really interesting thing about this situation is that, um, sorry, we, we're not even touching on our notes or anything. I'll stop talking in a second and Tom's got some things he wants to discuss. But That's the, right, no, this is important stuff. Just, just the really interesting thing is that anyone who sees a window, like in New South Wales right now, we're looking like maybe there's a chance of a lockdown in like a couple of weeks. So all of a sudden people are like, Oh, hey, right now, guess what? We moved in back in with our parents because we thought we were going to have a scary time with our rent. But then we got JobKeeper and now we're in with our parents. They want to help us pay for the wedding. And all of a sudden we found an extra 20 grand for our wedding. We're like, what? 
We did not expect that to happen. We expect it to be struggle street for everyone, but that's not true. There are always some people, weddings are important to people, always some people who really want to invest in that because it doesn't matter if there's worldwide play going on when they remember it in, you know, 30 years time, they just want to look at it like it was their wedding day, regardless of what was going on around them. So we have people turning around going, can we get married right now? Can we do that with our numbers? Quick, here's the money. And we're like, okay, but if you pay us this portion of the money, no matter what happens, we get to keep that. And with the rest of this money, if you need to postpone, that's our contract. We can do that. We'll negotiate with you. You know, so they've got a comfort of knowing we'll work with them and they've got a solid understanding that if there's a small portion, that's ours regardless, you know. So it's going to be okay to run our business on the basis that we, we've we got that covered in our contract. What and, kind of percentage are we talking yeah. that you take as a non-refundable deposit? Well, we used to take a lot less. I think when we first started, it was 10%. Um, and we were charging a lot less. So I think now it's 25%. But we yep. understand that we're we're in a really lucky um, kind of demographic at the moment. So we're in a, a, a high middle range. So we decided uh, not to step directly into the luxury space. We've had a few luxury wedding friends who honestly are doing million dollar weddings who've had to refund amounts of 70 to a hundred thousand dollars and now they're hurting um yep. we our deposits are around one to two thousand dollars um and you know that's something that we can negotiate with them around things but our, our wedding prices depending on where we are we can charge anything from around four to nine thousand dollars, depending on what we're doing for that client, um, and we're very happy in that space. Yeah, and those those larger deposit amounts they do go towards our. Um, we've got quite a, a lot of overheads that we um, fork out for, especially in the the early stages of the bookings. Yeah, uh, a lot of yeah, a lot of the planning <clears throat> and uh, information that we provide um, at the start of them plan of their planning processes. Um, very valuable and, and and information that they'll be able to use throughout the whole process. So, um, so yeah. I'm, I'm going to drop you a tip based on what Tom just said. Um, people, uh, and I will come to your questions. Thank you, everyone, for dropping those yeah, questions. I'm reading we, them. I'm taking some notes about yes, it. As yeah, well. we're, yeah, we're going to so. answer your questions. I really appreciate you. Because there's some good ones there. I can see some really great ones. Yeah, <laughs> I just want to say in your quotes, when you quote for people, please include any work you do prior include emailing back and forth, talking with them on the phone, texting with them over social media and any planning you do, talking to other wedding vendors, like just have it somewhere in your text because when the couple say, oh, we want to cancel and you've done nothing for us, you can be like, oh, hang on a second, I've done all of this, which is create a run sheet for you, book the timings with my person, la, 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 do all this stuff. That's all preliminary work and that takes a lot of effort. And that's what the deposit is actually for. It's for covering your insurances and your overheads and everything you need to keep the business going. But at the same time, it's to cover all that preliminary work. So one thing we do do until about a year ago is include a little note just saying, and this covers all the preliminary work we do, including meetings, phone calls, blah, blah, blah. And that really helps. It really helps. So please, if you can take away one thing from today, add that into either your quote or your contract somewhere. It's really crucial cool um do you, wanna, do you want to hit these questions first or do you want to jump into these questions first um do you want to leave the questions till the end or do you do you think we should uh, answer them as they're coming up it's totally up to you guys i i don't mind i think if we answer them as they're going they're going to be kind of relevant to what we're talking about though so that yeah, might be better well uh i'll just go through i thought i saw a brendan go to brendan he had a brendan. is that right um he was asking about postponing wedding date two or three times. How are you dealing with someone oh. wanting to do that? Well, uh, I guess from it's it's a tough one. Um, it I guess it's going to be up to you and how you feel about it. Um, we've been uh, we, we've had to uh, move about thirty eight to forty weddings uh, over the past few months, um, which has been difficult to say the least, um, but we have done it fairly successfully. We've only had a couple of cancellations. Um, so, but the thing that we did that we think helped quite a lot was we've said any postponements and any, you know, for the future, everything, you know, uh, all that you've paid, we've, uh, we're not going to ask you for a, another booking fee or, a, you know, a, a date holding deposit, whatever it is. 
uh, we're just going to move it. And that's that sort of uh, it, it sort of tied people over it's, for the moment. It's yeah. okay. It's like it's the karma fairies sort of thing. So, yeah. okay, I understand how frustrating it might be to move someone's date two or three times. And uh, we do ha we have spoken with a lot of vendors who've been like, I'll oh, move it twice for complimentary. After that, it's one hundred and fifty to three hundred dollars or whatever it is for each time you move your date after that, because obviously you might be screwing yourself out of yeah. you know a five grand wedding or whatever it is in the future, or even more if you're doing luxury Especially weddings if it's or whatever a prime it is. Date or something like it's that. It's a prime know, date, yeah. um, but usually couples it, it, in a contract law Australia wide. They have to provide you with options. They can't just go, our new date is this. They're not entitled to do that. That is not negotiating with you. They have to say, we have two or three new dates to choose from. Is something appropriate to you? And what we've been doing a lot of the time is even if we're available for all three or whatever it is, we will take the one that we think is the least jeopardizing to future bookings. So if there's a Friday there, we'll take the Friday because the likelihood that you know, we need those Saturdays okay, and those Sundays, so, yeah. um, you know, really important. But also I need you to consider something um, with that, Brendan, is that, okay, cool, it hurts to maybe not be securing another wedding, but how much would it hurt you to refund the whole wedding you're juggling? And and how many times can you do it? Because we went, la -li la -li la doing the maths, if we have to refund 10 weddings, our business is stuffed. We kind of went, oh, that's not, that's not okay. So we went, oh, we'll negotiate a few of these. And, and, you know, so we just, that's why we blanket went, okay, we're just going to no penalty, move everyone when we can. And we understand we've already copped a second wave that we might cop a third wave. We've opened our capacity. So instead we used to take one to two weddings a week we're going to be doing like three to four weddings a week and we're going to be dying. It's going to, it's going to physically be a challenge for us. We're going to have to get super fit to do it. But we looked at our calendar and went, Hmm, what can our business sustain? And we went, okay, we still need two new bookings a weekend. And these people have already paid us and we've already lived off that money. So we need to have now these four weddings in, in the future. So just look at how much it will hurt you if you refund those people and that before you decide whether you need to charge them a fee um, or you can standardly make the decision today to say, okay, you get two, two postponements, no fee. After that, if you need to postpone a third time, the fee from now on is going to be $400 or something. Make it tangible because they understand. But if you're like, yeah, that's the $5,000 I would have gotten from another wedding, that they're not going to be happy with you. And even if you still, they paid it and still ended up doing that wedding, they're going to hate you. So there's no point. You want to be liked by these people. And also they're all going through things because everything's a bit scary. So definitely look at your capacity, look at what you can pay, what you can't pay before you decide within yourself, okay, I'm going to take this hit or, oh, you know what, it's not worth it for me. I'm going to refer them to someone else and refund them and make it all okay that way. There's different ways to juggle it. Yeah. I do have one other point on that and that could be, I don't know if this would work, but I, I was just thinking about it as you were talking, Kate, and mm -hmm. Potentially, you could say there's no fee for moving a wedding date if you move it to a Friday or a Thursday or whatever, a weekday. That's cool. Um, yeah, yeah. But then on a Saturday, unfortunately, you, I'll have to charge you this amount Yeah. because obviously they're in demand. But you don't have to say it like that. You can yeah, but, and so. just, just be be very upfront with them as well. Be, be as honest as you can with them as well. They'll appreciate that and they'll, you know, if you give them an idea of the situation, of you know, how it's sort of affecting your business and that kind of thing, you know, they, they might, you know, they'll you know, be able to work with you a lot, lot better. But also highlight what it means for them. Yeah. The likelihood I'll do your wedding is greater and I'll take care of you and don't just be like, oh, me and my business hurts because they – I know some people really won't kind of care. Yeah. So those lines of honesty, you still have to focus on them as the client being like, yeah, okay, absolutely. this just means this for me, but this is what it means for you. And we're going to look after you and, yeah. you know, you can reassure them in that. So if you're like, if it's a Friday, this is what I can provide and make sure that it's all safe and good and that you've Tell got them, that yeah. date just for you sort of thing. Tell them how excited you are for their wedding. Cause you are, you, you really want to do their wedding. You, you know, you don't want to, you don't, I don't want to be sitting at home, you know, twiddling my thumbs and not you know, doing much work at the moment. I, I want to be, be out, out singing. I want to be doing my job. I want to do what I, what I love to do. So. It's, it's funny because in these times you forget how excited you are and how much you like your job. 
Yeah. And also you forget because the biggest thing we found and the most depressing thing is if you're amazing at something, like you're an absolute killer MC or you are the best chauffeur ever and every time the couple's like crying on you, like you told me stories in the kind of way, you made me feel so calm, you played my favourite songs in the car and like it made me red carpet, made me feel like royalty. And, like if they say all those things, you're like, yeah, I'm the boss. Guess what? For three months or however long, no one's told you that and you yeah. haven't had that fulfilment. That's depressing because all you're doing is all this work for these couples, like in the balancing their dates and their invoices and stuff. And then you're never getting the the reward and the repayment for it. So it does hurt and you can forget how good you are at your thing. But the thing is, if you if you are who you think you are at your job, when you roll in, even if you're a little bit rusty to that first wedding, oh, you're still going to kill it and everyone's still going to love you. So um, I think you, you need to remember that you're all capable. You're all really capable suppliers because we've worked with a stack ton of you and we know, you know. So just uh, keep focusing on it. And if you need to rewatch some of the footage from previous weddings you've done or look over your own social media just to remember where you're at, that's a really good thing to do. Yeah. Just remember your skill set. Um, yeah, cool. Like a little pep talk for yourself. Absolutely. I love that. You need to you need to celebrate the wins. Like even if you just had a small win at home. I'm not saying, you know, you've 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 uh you've done ten emails so you get another glass of wine. Uh, you know, it's, <laughs> it's more of, you know, you you've maybe booked a wedding this week or something like that. You know, that's that's a win at this time, that is a win. Go and get yourself a coffee or get your, you know, you know, go do and, something to reward yourself. Go and hug your animals or you know, your <laughs> whatever. Um, but there was another question uh, from Andrea, I think, uh, about um, the so dancing rules. Yeah, I was coming out with a, yeah, worried about the dance. I know I we're we're sort of heartbroken by that a little bit as well. Um, it's it's all in your approach and what you, how you feel about, you right? Yeah, you can slide on in. <laughs> no, 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 I want you to be in there. Sorry, the, the frame is like <laughs> more. Um, yeah, if, if you approach that wedding, you know, a little bit downhearted that there's no dance floor, people get that vibe from you as well. You know, you've got to be like super peppy, you know, you can't wait to um be there you know if you're a um so you're a singer dj and mc you know you're in control you've got you've got the floor um so if you want to implement games that people can do while they're sitting seating you know sitting down talking and stuff like that instead of dancing that's cool um if you're a singer you can get people singing in their chairs with it with everyone that's that's one of my favorite things to do um it's really up to you what you want to do dancing doesn't have to happen We've had uh, weddings where there hasn't been a dance floor at all in the past, um, which, you know, Bef the couple before COVID. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they, they, it was maybe it wasn't a late a late wedding, it but something yeah. that you know just sort of went like late up and people involved and you know sort of moving around in their seats, uh, singing along to the stuff. You know, there, there's a whole bunch of games that you can research and implement. See, too. The, yeah, the the cool thing is that people aren't considering is, okay, you're focusing on the loss. Like, yeah, the cool thing you did, and I know this because it's like it's our recipe for success, is that you do the great singing thing and then you wow them with them singing. It's all really smooth because you're in control of all those jobs and it works really well and then you get the dance floor pumping and everyone's like, oh, wow, you're really good at all these things. You now have space for innovation. Yeah. So the cool thing is nothing else was going to disrupt, uh, like disrupt that pattern. You were always going to do that one cool thing for the next 10 years. Guess what? You now have permission to do something totally different and totally cool. They're in our industry because the wedding, wedding industry is a creative industry. Aside from the legalities involved of like you need your license for this, you need to report the music or whatever it is that you have to do in you know, whether it's food prep or the things you have to do as a celebrant. Outside of that, there is nothing restricting your creativity, your development of your offer. You can offer anything. And I would put all my money on it that you've had a wedding, um, Andrea, that has kind of not ended up in a dance floor just naturally because they ran out of time because people don't, aim necessarily for dancing if you're that kind of caramel voice and you're singing and stuff and people are enjoying that 
they're, they're out for a good time. Like, I don't know if I'm lazy, but I like sitting down and drinking wine and drinking coffee and talking to people and getting serenaded. People can do that for hours. So don't don't think that the loss of the dance floor uh, as a temporary measure is is a real, um, you know, uh, arrow to the chest sort of thing. Just look at how how much fun you can have. Maybe you can get people doing um, Mexican waves from their table. Like if you need them to get up and get moving a little bit, you can be like, everyone sit up, we're going to do a little Mexican wave. Also, we've replaced one thing, thing I came up with that Tom thought was really lame but I thought was really cute was we were trying to think of how we can do a socially distanced exit. So we came up with a cheerleaders rumble. I call it that because it sounds like it's a thing. It's not, it's a thing now. And it's just like a tunnel because everyone is spaced on either side and spaced across from each other, but they just have to clap their hands as loud as they can and stomp their feet as as they possibly can a couple run through that way. Everyone is distanced from each other and it's still like an exit. So you just got to sit down and go, what's this thing? How can I do that? But like safe and how can you do it? So it's safe for you and interesting for everyone. And there's so many events that revolve around cool stuff. That's not a dance floor. So um, sit down and tweak your recipe because yeah. it could be a more successful, more powerful thing than what you offer right now. Yeah. Um, the other thing as well, uh, actually do the math as well. Like if there's, um, you know, you've got a large, maybe they do have quite a large area for a dance floor and you might find that you can legally fit five to six people on that dance floor. Do it. Like pick five people, go who, who's up, who wants to, who wants to show us your dance moves? and get them on the dance floor dancing in front of oh, people. Oh, that's cool. Like, yeah, yeah, you could go to the table and be like, guys, what's your table song request? Hey, you have 10 yeah. minutes to agree on one song, oh. and then those five people dance, and that's it. it. Might be, <laughs> might be, you might be able to pit tables against each other and go, right, well, table 10, let's go, you guys are up. And then, you know, by round of applause, you can tell us, you know, how good these guys go, uh, good these guys are dancing. You know, make it, make it fun, make it interactive, make it, um, something that people will remember and go, oh, that, that was brilliant. I really enjoyed that, you know. Um, you you don't have any, like, you have restrictions, but it's opened to, you know, Your you are now open to so many other innovation. things that you can, you can think about and, and do and implement, you know. So, um, yeah. Really important. Did we miss another question? There was, but I think. Um, there was one about a deposit that we missed. Um, so cool. they've got a couple that want to get married in December. Yeah, but they're hesitant to pay a deposit because they're scared to commit financially to the date. Well, then you, you you need to give them um, reassurance that that will carry over to a new date, but specify like Lucy was saying. Wait, I don't actually know when people are looking at us what side you're on. So I'm guessing that you guys are alongside us, even though with us you're like all on one side. <laughs> oh yeah. So for 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 me, we're on either side of you. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, okay. You're you're nicely framed by our two gigantic heads. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. It's, it's Thank really you. a beautiful view. Okay. <laughs> it's all Tom. It's this man. Um, so I was just gonna say, you just need to reassure them what they get, like getting for that money. Like if yeah. you can, if you can be like, okay, well, uh, I'll take less of a deposit, or I mean, actually, no, I wouldn't tell anyone to do that. If you take the deposit but say, okay, but you can move it to any Friday in the next whatever or check in with your venue prior to booking me and see what their what their postponement option is and then if you can make it so that your postponement option is complementary to their wedding venues so that if they've got a selection of dates in the future but it's weekdays, you can offer weekdays. Um, you need to have a remedy available. The legal word is remedy. If you can yeah. offer a remedy, then they shouldn't be hesitating to lock you in. And if you can offer them value straight off the bat, they're going to feel more comfortable. So if you can be like, okay, well, we're going to do a video call and I'm going to tell you what I'm providing for you on the day and I'm going to answer your questions so they can go, oh, you're a professional. I feel comfortable with you because everyone's scared right now. Um, so you just that's so true. Yeah, calm I, them down. I would do all of that but also put some pressure on too. Um, so if you want them to book, uh, I would also say, listen, we've got a few other inquiries for that date um, and I've opened it to you. Um, and I want to look after and you. I want to look after you. I, I really think mm -hmm. your wedding is going to be great. 
I can move, if you need to move the date, we can do that. We can talk about that another time. But just so that you've locked us in. Don't miss out. Don't miss out. Let's let's book this in now. Pay a deposit by this date and you've got us for however, you know, if we need to move again, we can do that. But you've got us then, yeah. you know. Um, just having that uh, little bit of pressure is, is also, you know, important, uh, that incentive to, to really uh, book with you. So, yeah. you know. You're likely to, to then get a response whether that will be here's my money or we're actually still we're still thinking about other things and and you know look exploring our options so that way you can open that data up again to other, other but inquiries. but definitely if people are hesitant like you guys are so professional just like really chat with them just just get on a zoom call and talk to them because they're gonna go oh you're a real person not just like a bot because if they've only talked to you via messenger or email or, or even if it's a phone call, like they haven't really seen your face. Yeah. They need to remember that you guys are people because maybe they also haven't left their house or apartment in two months. Like you've just got to remind them that there's there's optimism. There is a future. Yeah. That our industry is not dead. It's worth billions of dollars. People are always going to want to get married. Mm -hmm. And now there's a, a pe it's piling up. We know we've got to get a new van because our capacity has got to go up because we've got to now be ready for this boom that's coming because it is. And maybe maybe it's not coming as soon as we thought because things are not okay right now. They will be okay. Just because they're not okay right now doesn't mean things aren't going to be better in the future, especially in this country. So we've got a huge advantage and people are still optimistic. And we've also got space. So we've got people, we've got vineyards and we've got open fields and people have already been getting married out in the middle of nowhere for forever. So there's going to be some way to do it. You've just got to make sure that your offer suits that way and that people are going to still continue to book you for those things. So um, def definitely understand that you have a future in this industry. It's still worth a lot of money. It's worth your time. And even though it hurts now and it might hurt a bit longer, it is worth staying with it. Just really is. Yeah. Um, I think uh, there was another question, but I think it leads kind of nicely into what we're going to be talking about. I think it was from Vish um, about how do you differentiate yourself from all the other vendors that is out there? If there's a saturation of your market, all that kind of thing, like how do you, how do you, you know, you know, uh, sort of differentiate from those oh, people? Oh yeah, I you see. Know? Um, that's a great question because that's something that comes up a lot, especially. Um, uh, it, I get that question a lot from photographers. Uh, there seems to be quite a, a, a heavy, you know, uh, sort of saturation of photographers, um, all with so varying different styles and you know, you know, people that can do different things. So um, it's it's a it's a really good question. I guess um, you, you could you could go down the road of like naming the different things in your your product or in your service that you do that you know makes you a little bit more special than, than someone else but i think the biggest thing and the thing that we learned um very early on in our careers is that the one thing that differentiates you from everyone else is you i know that sounds really bizarre and kind of strange you want you. no one does your job like you no one no one sings like you no one sings like us um in the whole world um, no one operates a photo booth like you, you know, um, no one conducts a ceremony like you, I even if, you know, even if you use the same camera as someone else, you're operating that camera, you, that other person isn't operating that camera. So um, we find that th those personal uh, marketing ad campaigns where you, you actually show the kind of person that you are and how you approach a wedding, they're, they're so effective, they're telling yeah. a story. And um, that's what's so important to couples nowadays is that they want to be connected to a person that's going to be working at their wedding. If, if you want to feel inspired and have a look at a bit of behind the scenes vendor culture, think of some guy called Max did the big day of, yeah. I think that's what it's called. And it's a whole series, it's pretty dark, on behind the scenes of so, wedding vendors doing, doing weddings and what they are personally sacrificing to do their job or all yeah. these things. But it really shows the story from... Um, you know, our eyes, what we see with our jobs. And it shows how dynamic things are. It's really cool because Jane stays in a lot of those and he's very influential because he's very good at personal brand. And he auditions his couples to see if they're compatible before he takes them on to do their wedding. So that's next level. It's not like our early days when we were like begging people like, 
please, sir, allow us to do your wedding for cheap. Like, it's not, he's like, okay, here's, you know, what I, I can do for you and you come to me and see, you know. So um, it, it's really, it's really, really amazing to, to realise that how unique you are. There might not have been anyone like you born in history before and there may never exist someone like you yeah. <laughs> it just yeah. you've just got to think there's no standardization of our industry like if you're a caterer you've got to have commercial kitchen cooking license blah but it, in terms of actually your your offers and your packages and how you conduct your business there's no rules. Like some people send text messages, some people send invoices, some people do emails, like everyone does it differently. And when I was a bride, it really woke me up to how people conduct their businesses so differently. No single business was running it the same, even if they were using the same like software, it was all differently branded and the descriptions were different and the, the allocated time to me, whether they met with me or not, it was all different. So it's up to you to sit down and go, what's cool? What's cool? What's different? What can I offer that people will like? Because I'll be honest with you, when I was a bride, I hated it. It was so much work and no one made me feel special. Even though I booked some amazing people, they were good at their art. But they weren't really good at necessarily like business and customer service. And it, it's already a difficult thing. It's like paying to do a job. It's like a job that you not only don't get paid for, but that you have to fork out 60K to do. Like it's not, it's it's really hard. So when you look at being a, a whether you've got a groom, groom couple, bride, bride couple, bride, groom couple, um, you know, often it, it's weird. Often the work falls on one person more than the other. Uh, we've seen in the past that sometimes that's the bride, but in our experience, um, sometimes that's even the groom where he's doing all the work because she's busy with her job or a child or whatever it is. And um, it just means that one person is having a less good time than you think. So we decided as soon as we had our wedding and knew the experience from that viewpoint that we were going to spend 5 to 10% back on the client and what they spend on us. Yeah. So we used to send them gift packs. We're going to do something really cool and really new that we're excited about now. We've got a different gift that we're going to give them. Just so that, and, and not on the wedding day, because on the wedding day, they're cashed. They got their wishing well. They got all the nice things that everyone's giving them. You know when they're hurting is in the lead up to the wedding day because not only is it like they talk to their vendor 16 months out from the date or something like that, maybe even more, two years or whatever, they book their vendors and then there's sometimes no communication up until the date. Maybe they're just following your Instagram but you're not really emailing back and forth or there's not like a lot going on. And then just like a few months before the date, they're talking with everyone and there's a lot going on. In that lull, they're losing a bit of confidence and they don't feel special and they're a bit broke. So it, even even like super wealthy people, whoever your demographic is, usually that's like not the fun time. If you then send them something cool or even if you're delivering a bottle of wine to them, whatever it is. An exciting it, email, a shout out on Facebook. I don't know. Something whatever it is, you're thinking of them. You can yeah. record them a song and send it to them. You can do a bunch of things depending on how innovative uh, if you gift them something, whether it's your time or whether it's a financial thing, it's going to lift them up in their confidence in you. And also it's going to kill the social media. They're going to go da, 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 and it's going to go out to everyone and everyone's going to be jealous. They're going to be like, I want to book them. Where's my, I booked my performer. Where's my bottle of wine? Yeah. I want that thing. So it's really, it's a really good thing for you in terms of marketing. If they share it, they don't have to share it. But also it's going to lift their confidence in you. It's going to make them feel good. Your job is literally about making your customers feel valued. If they don't feel valued, get out. Don't do this job. Because they're not, they're not going to appreciate you even if you recover from it. Like even if you do a, a really great job on the wedding day, if they've secretly been feeling a bit shitty about you for 16 months, it's not going to fix it. So um, definitely I think the thing vendors need to put the most work into is the preliminary work and the lead up, whatever way you contact them, whether you are liking their posts on Instagram and commenting, yeah. like, oh, you went for your dress fitting, that looks so good, and oh, you're, that looks really, you know, pay attention to them. They deserve some of your attention, and guess what you've got right now? Time to pay them attention. So that's the best thing you can do right now. Yeah. 
Um, I just saw Maddie said uh, any gifts, any ideas for gifts. Um, we did hampers, just like little, um, you know, gift packs of cookies and, you know, some, uh, I think we had like a, like a, a cause we thought, oh, there was a lot of stuff for the, the bride, but the groom sort of missed out. So we had like, there was like a shaver kit and like a beard. Like if we knew they had like a beard, we could give them like a, like a beard wax or something like that, you know, just, just to sort of know that they're, they're being, um, that we, we've been following them that we know what, you know, the things they might want. So just little, little things, it doesn't have to be super expensive. I mean, to, I don't, okay. wants me telling you about with the, we're going to give like a little portable speaker. So like JBL speakers, um, to our to our next couple or to our our couples and, and also there's there's a bunch of things you can do so uh the reason that we won't necessarily continue doing that is because we want to support local businesses so if the best thing you can actually do we found a hamper company that we really loved who coincided with our, our brand sorry for the first like three years we did this um and that's caring canary in sydney shout out they're still amazing they're still around but we were sending like $400 hampers. So we upped the price, uh, our, our deposit amount. And then we spent like the amount of the deposit amount that we could without risking our overheads if they canceled on a gift for them. So if you need to bring up your deposit amount by another five or 10% so that you can afford to send them something without it hurting you and your prices, then do that. Um, but if you network locally with a supplier, whether they make candles, whether they do photo frames, that's a cool one. Photo frame, this is where your wedding photo is going to go. Or this is where your engagement photo is going to go, you know. Or like it's something aspirational is nice. Like this is for your future thing. That's always good. Um, but, yeah, something that will help them in the in the lead up to the wedding is always good. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, we, we found that going to um, Karen Canary was great because we realised that if we were spending, <laughs> we were spending 10% of what our, our back on our clients for the first three years, we, we were one of the bigger clients for that company, but they believed in us. They supported us as well. They'd do us favors. They'd send off hampers for us before we'd paid them in tight spots and things like that, like really looked after us. If you look after other people, they'll look after you. And um, definitely a cool thing about doing that is they're going to tell everyone about you. And um, other people in business are in a position of power to get you more business. So definitely finding someone that's unique to your gift ideas. Like, yeah, I think that's why it's better to go with someone local. So it's technically like a marketing channel for you to be forming strategic partnerships with other businesses, even outside of the wedding industry. But then how cool is it when you're like, oh, the couple's like that one item that I gave you so much, that's their bombardier now. And you go back to that business where you bought the one candle for the couple from and go, guess what? They want 200 of them. Like it empowers you, it empowers them. The couple are delighted. Everything works out. So go around, find whether it's on Facebook or whatever, find local businesses that you like their products. Seek out their products. Be a good business person. Be responsible, sustainable, you know, eco-friendly. Go find something really cool that you really love that coincides with your brand. So uh, we did cookies when we first started by cooking dream music so that's why we started recording songs for them or yeah. um you know doing little music gifts and um downloadables and things like that so you don't have to spend that money but you do have to spend time creating something special send them a card send them something they can hold yeah. that's important tangibility is important yeah. okay sorry did i miss a someone someone asked a question what else did you mm -hmm. No, um, oh, there was, was this one. Um, so you've got, so Mary says she's got a, a couple that have uh, postponed, they have been a postponement arrangement and, uh, and then they've decided to cancel. What, what do you, what do you do? Um, that's, it's a tough one that, that it's, it's, um, I mean, it does, does depend on your contract and what you've got, um, especially with, uh, in terms of the cancellation because you've suggested and they, you know, you've, you've got a few, what is this now? Is it feedback? I don't know. Something. Sorry. Can everyone still hear us? We hope we're not yeah. having technological issues. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Um, yeah. 
yeah it, it's it's a cancellation it's it's almost got not much to do with um the global situation at the moment they've they you've offered them a whole bunch of different um, remedies. remedies for that for the situation and if they've decided to cancel then your cancellation uh policy now comes into play what happens what are they entitled to what are you entitled to um and that's what you stick to and if they don't agree with that then that's up to them to either pursue it further or to deal with it some other way that's up to them but um it's uh yeah the best offer i have in terms of if they're like we're out of a job now we're cancelling you we need money back is prior to them going and going to local fair trading or whatever um it, to to help your situation and help their situation is to offer a monetary value that you think is fair. They can always call you out and, and go, that's not fair. I'm going to get more than that. But to go with one of our couples, they paid us two and a half years ago. Like they booked us. They were really keen. They went, we want to pay you in advance. And then they postponed like another two years, which is clearly our prices have changed dramatically in four and a half years. And then they canceled. And we went, okay, here's our logic. This is the amount you paid us. This is the amount that's non-refundable. And then here's the GST and then there's the other taxes and then there's the that overhead and the that. And then there's this much left, which was like ended up being around 50%. And we went, if you agree to this amount, we can put this in your bank account now. And because that they're like, they need the money now. They're like, we agree. that We looked at that. That's fair. We're following you. We might get married in another five years' time or whatever. We want to come back to you. And we're like, cool. With the money you paid us, we're going to tell you that that's a priority ticket. We will look to book you first if you come back to us. Uh, we're not going to attribute any of that cash to that date, but it's just like we will try our best to look after you in other ways, like looking at our calendar and what we can offer you in the future. Um, and with some of the people who've wanted to cancel, it's actually because they want to elope. And the coolest thing we did is uh, there was one couple who'd paid us their deposit and then an instalment. So they'd paid us 50% of their amount, which is a couple of grand. And then we were like, we don't want to repay it. And we also kind of have lost that date now and we need more content and we want to work it and a bunch of reasons. And then we went, oh, the amount you've paid us is the price of our elopement package. Where's your elopement? What are you doing? And so we're just going to go sing for that and their drinks. So if maybe you can offer them a substitute product, like there's one couple who have chosen not to get married anymore and they haven't broken up. They're just like, not in this climate, not for the few years. We're like, not even in two and a half years. They're like, no. Nope. We're like, cool. For the amount you've paid us, do you want us to come to a Christmas party for you? I mean, photographers can be like, I can offer you a family's portrait session. Offer a substitute thing if you can don't lose the client they love you they wanted to book you if they've cancelled them wanting to book you kind of hasn't changed in their in the way they feel about you it's just everything else that's impacted them so hang on to them some way offer them something yeah i absolutely love that um we just got another question through yeah. which is about following up with couples which is one of yeah. the questions that i wrote down for you guys anyway which is fantastic yeah cool. um so this person gets a lot of quotes coming through but then yep. they rarely get a reply once they provide the quote so oh. how often should you be contacting couples back and what's your process for you know how you do that and what channels you use um okay well i guess it, it does depend on what you're saying. So uh, I would I would love to have a look at um, the kind of uh, your copy and what you're actually using to, to and what questions you're asking them in the follow ups and and also, in, in, you know, the the kind of things you're including in your quote. Um, the a really great resource is actually Alan Berg, um, who's a, a genius at getting those replies back. And um, was an easy yes. weddings um, advocate speaker at Evolve. Yes, um, he's got a, he's got a couple of books out, or a few books, um, and I'm oh, sure yeah. there's yeah, we might have one right here. <laughs> um, but it does depend on what uh, questions you are sending. But how many questions is also a, a big thing. If you're asking too many questions, oh Shut yeah, summer weddings is good. Read an that excellent book. book. Okay. Actually. Yeah. I couldn't read it because I was doing a lot of driving around for things. So get the audio book if you can. Audio book yeah. is good. Yeah. 
um, it's a it's a really great resource. Um, you know, I was a bit skeptical at the start because I, I heard it was like a used car salesman. I was like, oh, you know, that's a bit <laughs> weird. But the pro, like, he's worked in the wedding industry for quite a while and um, is actually a really, really uh, great salesman. He uses stories a lot um, in his uh, in the way he tells, um, and also the way that he gets people to reply. Um, is it, it, he usually asks these um, a funny questions. A, yeah, a funny questions. So if he's saying, um, I, I know I realize that you haven't I noticed that you haven't replied. Um, I just want to know if it's one of these two things. A, you you, um, you have you do want to book you book me, but um, you're busy. You, you're busy and you just have been able to get back to me. B, you've been abducted um, by aliens. B, B, sorry, Kate's talking off camera. Um, or B, you uh, you don't want to book me and you just haven't gotten around to telling telling me. Um, and or C, you've been eaten by a dinosaur and you can't get in contact. And you, that it sort of just throws something a little bit left of field and gets that attention. And you can also put a little bit of that in the in um in the title for the email as well so that it, it, it stands out and they go oh, what what's this and they click on it <laughs> oh right oh right i forgot to email back yes and they email back straight away so yeah so. i'm, I'm going to share a very very big tip with you right now a big secret that changed our business a few years ago so seriously write this down i know a lot of you are using crms we flick between CRMs. Sometimes we go back to doing things manually for a bit, depending on how personalized we want to make things or whether we want it to look kind of basic or really special. Um, but something I realized is that a majority of clients receiving our quotes are receiving them on a phone. Ta-da! Yeah. Guess what happens when you get a PDF on a phone? you have to download it and open it and sometimes it breaks and sometimes you it's, it's so many times people who are emailing from outlook to gmail people don't understand you got to scroll down to the bottom of the email chain to see the pdf so if you're sending through a quote in a pdf i think it was a huge amount at the time it was like two years ago so i'm not up to date but it was like more than 50 percent of people will never open that pdf just process that for a second. They've been talking to you back and forth. Maybe you've shared between five and eight emails. Depends how in-depth you get with them. Maybe your copy is really, really nailed and you've only been back and forth like three times. Who knows? But the second that they get your quote, they never open it. So the coolest thing we ever did was we just don't do PDF quotes. We are now apparently, according to the International Wedding Awards, the most popular wedding singers in the country. We got there by just sending text quotes because guess what? They can see it all at once. They can see what's there. They can show it to people. They don't have to download it. They can screenshot it in one go. It's not a proposal. It's not like five pages of blah, blah. That's too much information. They like they want a summary and they want an amount. If they want more in-depth, they'll ask. They'll be like, hang this on, what am I paying for? And then yeah. you can, you know, and you can always send them a PDF quote that's nice and fancy and also put it in yeah. text. So it will change the amount of response you get and how many people book you if you put your quotes in text. I don't care if you do it as well as PDF, but you have to do it. Change that in your business right now. That's excellent advice. Cool, cool. Um, how much time do we have left? Because yeah, we can talk for days. Um, so we could we can go for a little bit longer if you guys want to. It's totally up to you. We did have a few other questions that I'd written down for you guys. Um, if anyone else has questions, feel free to ask them as well. But I wanted to talk a little bit about um, what marketing channels to use, what you guys use and what works for you. Um, do you guys do any print, for example, or is that do you see that as being dead, um, SEO, wanna, all that kind of thing? You so, want to tell them about print, Tom? What, our, um... The thing we discovered like six months <laughs> ago that blew our minds. So we we did like a bit of a, an analytics on on our where website. people yeah our website and where people were clicking and what they were clicking on and how they were discovering us basically, um, and we found out that the very large majority I like was ninety percent yeah it was a really, it was a really high number were actually literally typing in white clover into Google. No, um, no, yeah. no, no. They were typing whitecloverMusic.com yeah, into, so the, into search the search bar, yeah, which yeah. means 
they somehow had our full website address. They yeah. weren't searching us on search engines. They ha they had typed it from somewhere. And we're like, where were they getting it from? Yeah. So we checked it out. So, and yeah, and it, it was bizarre because we, we actually spend so much time on social media. We spend, uh, I don't know if anyone's seen um, our Instagram stories. They are very in depth. There's like, you know, 30, 30 minutes worth of story um for each wedding that we do and it's very you know all behind the scenes stuff and, and it takes like thing. eight hours of editing yeah kate's like it and a ninja with it. it still takes a long time to do um so we would be spending you know a, a large majority of our time on social media and to not to not even be 10 percent of of you know where people were clicking through it was just it just blew our minds completely um the biggest thing that we do as musicians um, is sing in front of people. And where we do that is at expos. Um, now those expos, we're handing out a flyer and that has our- Or show bags. Or, yeah, or in a show bag, but there's a flyer usually somewhere or a booklet um, with our details in it, like uh, our website. And that's where they're getting it from. They're getting the flyer and they are sitting down in front of a computer and literally typing in our website. So it, it really shocked us because we have spent so much money on flyers and business cards. At one stage we had wooden business cards. We were to go like we were on Vistaprint or we were going through really expensive channels where we were spending like $4 per print booklet to explain in depth what we do. Um, we were just creating printed media. And, and while in terms of print media, we don't really believe in so much advertising in um, you know, necessarily newspapers or magazines. Sometimes we do that, but we've got a different agenda when we do that. That's usually because we're supporting the the thing itself. Just, we've just got quickly, a bit of just quickly on that what? on that form of media. Um, check out the when it's published. So if it's published mon monthly, it might not be a great investment. Um, but if it's like a biannual or annual magazine, there's a lot of them out there, especially bridal magazines as well. They do an annual magazine. Um, they can be a, a, a bit more worth your money, you know, yeah, so just yeah. be, be mindful of those things. I mean, too. if you're paying a thousand dollars for an ad, you want it to be around for a while. I know that sometimes the annual magazines are about three grand or something like that, but maybe the parents are paying and the parents read that magazine. And if that gets you enough weddings, then cool. But we don't really believe, you know, if, if we're throwing money behind a, a print media publication, uh, it's usually because we're supporting that publication. It's usually because we've gone, we're, okay, this isn't so much a, a risk with our money. We want to support this business and we want to be seen alongside these other brands. Let's invest in it. And it's not, we're not expecting to get weddings back from that. That's like a strategic network partnership thing. If we're putting money behind flyers that we're handing out at expos, well, that people are socially distanced from us while we're singing and they're picking it up off the barrel or whatever, or it's already in their show bags. People with gloves on have placed them in show bags. We did not realize that the thousands of flyers we printed equated to the amount of people typing www.whitecloversic.com into their search bar. And it was 90% of our business. And we were at that time getting 35 to 50 inquiries a day. Now, we're still really lucky that around this time we're getting between seven and 10 inquiries a day, which is still huge because we had a period last week where we had three days, no inquiries. That's the first time that's happened in like five years. So things are up and down with people and how they feel about things. But the the printing the flyers for the expo was huge because when people see you in person, meet you in person, yeah. connect with you, mm -hmm. that's when they form the best relationship with you. So you have to show up, whether that's a virtual wedding fair online, you know, um, but you have to show up. And it's very cool if you can have some kind of print media that it's something tangible again they can hold on to whether you get their email address and then you send them a little card in the post if they seem like they're intent on booking you and you're like thank you for inquiring with us here's our information or here's our flyer or whatever it is i strongly believe in that stuff and if you can do it while there's like a sale on with your print person or your graphic designer or whoever it is then take advantage of it and do that yeah I believe that. absolutely fantastic i love that especially because for you guys at an expo, for example, you're showing what you do, mm -hmm. you know, and that's not possible for every different supplier. But I personally, when going to expos, absolutely loved, you know, being able to taste a cake yep. because it, it brings that convenience of not having to go to five different cake shops and try mm -hmm. things. You know, yep. you just 
you know, you're already there. It's already bringing everyone well, to you. Someone who's really surprising, Cakes by Brie, she's really cool. She sent us a message. She's like, hey, uh, I really like your work. Uh, do you want me to send you a sample cake pack? The guts on that. How good is that? Uh, do you contact another vendor and go, hey, here's a sample of my thing. You want this? Best believe we've been sending couples to her when she sends us a free cake. Like, Yeah, for sure. So if you can't get in touch with so much the couples at this time, the biggest thing you can do is get in touch with the vendors. And one thing we wanted to say that we didn't get around to is content. We were going to have a special guest today, but he was busy, so we're hoping to bring him on next time. His name is Chris Gray, and he's a photographer. He's a very cool local person, but he's very creative, so he's always busy. So he's uh, photographing an engagement exactly right now in Sydney, um, which he'll put up a bit later on. Um, we want to talk to him on, on camera to you guys because – we went and did a photo shoot during um, lockdown. We were out in the bush. He was socially distanced from us and because we can't have it, we could do it. Um, it. Just creating content during this time. How the, the amazing thing about advertising, I want to mention, the reason why we're still paying to advertise with Easy Weddings, the reason why we've kept the majority of advertising going even when things are tight is because all of a sudden a lot of people are dropped out of this race. Okay, so your advertising dollar is going twice twice as far as it used to go because all of a sudden a stack ton of businesses have disappeared because they've gone, oh, stuff's tight, I'm going to keep my money. But maybe you're not spending what you were, but just keep keep doing something. A little bit, yeah. A little bit because you need those bookings. You need to keep advertising to get your future bookings to get the money to keep it sustainable and keep your business running. So, I mean, do as much as you can for free. Work on creating your stories and your stuff. But if right now the best thing you can do is reach out to photographers, videographers, podcasts, and if right now I know a lot of people, even like international level amazing photographers we've worked with who are like pretty pretty famous in the wedding industry are doing reduced rate packages for vendors, jump on that because you might never be able to afford them again. And also that content will get you bookings. And a strategic partnership with that person who you're helping to support in this tough time. So if maybe you're like, oh, I used to spend a lot of money on advertising, but, you know, all I've got right now is this $200 and I'm worried about where I spend it. Like think of where that money hits and what the impact of that is. If you call a local person who's not doing anything that day and you're like, hey, for $150, can you do me five images? Just Into my product, I'll send it to you, make it easy, whatever it is. And then I do that, and then you chuck, uh, you know, $50 by boosting on Facebook. That would be a really successful thing for you that week or that month that you've done with your money. Make it make it count. And get, please, please, I implore you to keep advertising in some way during this time. Um, I'm not saying go big, I'm saying do something. Don't cut it out, or you'll regret it. Um, just, I just want to sort of quick fire a few of the, the, the answers for some questions that I see. We'll start to wrap it up, um, yeah. So do, do I play all day at an expo? No. Um, I, I could play for eight hours. That's not something I'd like to do, but I can do it if need be um, at a wedding. But um, I don't want to, like, piss off the other vendors. Like, if I'm singing and playing a lot of music, I don't want to, you know, interrupt them trying to sell to other couples as well. I'm sure there might be other musicians at the expo as well. I don't want to be playing while they're playing. You know, I might play Thinking Out Loud and then 10 minutes later they'll play Thinking Out Loud. I don't I don't want to do that. We always go and talk with the other vendors and with the other musicians. With the vendors, we say, if we're too loud, please come and tell us to turn it down. We are not precious about it at all. We'll get people to come into the space close to where we are. We don't need to project over the whole expo. Yeah, but, like, still COVID safe, like, away from us. Like, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> um, And with the, with the other musicians, work out, work out play times. So work out when, uh, you know, I'll, we'll play for half an hour, then you play for half an hour, and then we'll play for half an hour. So in that way, you get to play for a bit and then talk to people as well as, um, you know, you can also, uh, we always promote the other people too and go, hey, guys, we're going to be playing for the next half an hour. Then what you need to do is you need to go and talk to this band who are then going to be playing straight after us. Go and check them out. These guys are incredible. You know, check out their lead singer there. You know, 
she sounds incredible, uh, you know, whatever it is. But, you know, you're getting this rapport, you're getting this these people moving back and forth between your stands and the uh, the opportunity that you can then get to talk to them. Um, you know, you, you, you seem like this, uh, you know, very informed, very professional vendor then, you know? Yeah, and we're going to say, uh, we're actually going to give something really special um, to you guys through the Easy Weddings group. Yeah. We're going to post our one of our most popular downloads is our expo guide. So we've just created this free resource. It's just a little PDF. You can download and have a look at it about how to exhibit because you will get a chance to do that again soon. Um, you know, you might not be confident with it until January next year, but you need to look at your calendar now and book your expos. We book our expos like a year to year and a half ahead. So then you've got a promise of the future of where you'll be and couples will be like, oh, great, I haven't seen you before my date, but I'll get to and things like that. If they just need to meet you and click with you, especially if you're like a celebrant or something, they really need to personally connect and like see how you're standing there with your, you know, your iPad or your book or however you present yourself and, and really get to the idea in their head of what you're going to be at their wedding. Um, so we're going to pop our expo guide in the pro edu group after yeah. we finish this webinar. Guys, we've only, we're only going to stay on here for another five minutes. We're going to do a little summary uh, for you. If you've got any more questions, please put them in the inside vendor group. We're going to be yeah. we're in the office today. We are happy to answer those. Yeah. Um, but uh, in terms of an expo, you just got to understand that people who plan expos, they don't owe you much. They've given you a space to do your thing. So if you're a, a performer and you need to contact every other musician who's there and go, guys, we're going to create a schedule of when we're singing or when we're talking, um, it's all going to help us out. Like if you need to be assertive and have the initiative and go and do that, you need to do that. And it's same with people who are doing cakes and stuff. Like contact them and be like, hey, guys, what are you bringing? Oh, you're doing all mud cakes. Cool. I'm going to bring sponge samples or I'm going to do something different. Differentiate yourself from people around you by figuring out what they do and then just do anything different. Because then when someone comes over, even if you do mud cakes, if they're like, oh, I'm thinking of a mud cake, if you can then be like, hey, they do really great. Mud and that you, you're creating friendships, networks instilling confidence in your brand. Maybe you might have felt like you sacrificed a cake, but maybe you've made a friend for life out of the other caker who might hand you a job, a corporate job, where you get thousands of dollars worth of baking for a job because you've partnered with them. So um, definitely with Expos, there's a lot of things to do. We've got a very basic guide that we're going to put in the group for you. Um, and I think now Tom's going to do a wrap up and I'm going to do a wrap up. So, oh, okay. Oh yeah. Okay. I guess we should probably, uh, I had, there was a few other questions there. Um, there just with Maddie's question, there's a, there is a booking hierarchy, um, work out where you fit in that hierarchy and then talk to the people above that. And they're the people that you want referring you. So we're talking about the timeline. Time yeah, we've we've got one um, in our Easy Weddings yes. 2020. Um, yeah, totally. Supplier survey. So I'll include that when I send out the replay of this. Perfect. As yeah. well as the PDF that you guys are talking about, I'll include that as well, yep. so they can get it from Pro Ed, or they'll also get it in the replay yeah. email as well. Yeah, that, that's awesome. So yeah, th that, that's all I will we'll say about that. Um, so we we also had just a quick five point summary. I think we asked about uh, that. We were asked about starting a business. Um, Kate, did you want to go first with me? Oh, uh, so cause yeah, I, we, we uh, took different sure. approaches to it. We both each wrote our own, but, um, sure, I was just looking for my easy weddings guide. It's okay. really, really okay. good. That's all right, guys. So it's there for you. Yeah. They'll send it through. Um, I'm just going to do my five point summary that, uh, Lucy, uh, had encouraged me to do so that I can make some coherent sense because I know we've been a bit all over the shop today so thank you for being patient with us we just wanted to have a really down-to-earth chat with you um, so my five takeaways uh, about summarizing what we're talking about is number one be in control of your own portfolio and this means your branding and your social media where you show up so that you can really showcase your personality and really own it by you know showing who you are that's something we discussed personal brand is way stronger than any other marketing thing you could possibly do. So um, being in control of your own portfolio and spending time on it, developing it, um, that doesn't necessarily cost you anything unless you want to fork out a few dollars perhaps that help you create things and stuff. But um, just, yeah, taking care of your social media and your signature um, on your emails. Actually, that's just one thing I'm going to jump to. Uh, I've got a question here about boundaries. Setting boundaries with your couple, the best thing we ever did was on our email signature, we put our office hours. 
because people will call you at 2 a.m. and be like, hey, I was thinking of this song. We're like, wait, are you even our client? And they're like, oh, no, nah, but like have office hours on your email signature. Do it now. That will That's a good boundary. That will help you. Okay. Um, another tip is to continually educate yourself. So pretty much for our first few years before we could afford an amazing account that we have now and the team, like we got a few assistants and stuff that we didn't have before. It was just us doing everything. I would go to accountancy short courses. Like the government would send me a little email saying like, your local business center is doing this thing and it might be mind numbing, but you might learn some things. <laughs> I'd go to every single one of those. Like Tom was getting sick of me dragging him. It was like five o'clock in the morning. He's like, I'm a musician. I'm not cut out for 5 a.m. starts. We would go to networking meetings and small business events. You need to educate yourself on how to run your business better. That's it. Learn things. You can learn. There's like Harvard at University and stuff do free stuff online. Google teaches you how to use Google online. Just sit mm. on online courses, learn new things. Um, number three is the thing we were talking about, the biggest point of today, which is innovation and creativity are key. So outside of all those legalities, remember, don't let anyone tell you what you can and can't do. Like, oh, photo booth shouldn't be doing the setup with the thing in the thing. Lies. You do that. If you're willing to clean up 120 popped party poppers at the end of your shift, then you can give a party pop to everyone coming into your photo booth. Unless, you know, you got to check there's no heart conditions in the room sort of thing. I'm saying you can do whatever you want if you take due care because your your business is your business. <laughs> be innovative, be creative, and don't let people tell you what approach to take. Um, the wedding industry is creative industry and you might just be a visionary who's going to do something really, really groundbreaking. So really, uh, you know, uh, steer your own vessel. Um, number four is reassess your role every time you do it. One of the strongest things we do in our business is every time we do a, a wedding event, an expo, we do a debrief. We go, what worked? What didn't work? What could be better? Even if it wasn't our job, we're like, what is the thing that we could have done to make that rock? And then we fix it for next time, which is why we now do everything because <laughs> we, we kept going, Oh, we could do that. We could do it better. So we started picking up all these jobs every time we do a wedding. So reassess your role and offer every time you do it, figure out what worked and what didn't work so you can help yourself. Only offer what works. What's something you don't like about your job? Guess what? You don't have to do that thing anymore. If you're like, oh, you know, I hate rolling my gear out in the middle of dinner after I do a dinner set. Well, don't sell a package that finishes in the middle of dinner. Don't do it. We don't offer that. We don't ever let anyone see us pack up and leave. We don't want the hazard of it around people and we don't want people to think we're going home. Guests never understand what the couple have booked. They don't. They think you're lazy and you're leaving early. They don't know that the couple wanted that. So only offer what works. Only make yourself look good. So if there's a thing you don't particularly like, find a way to cut that out of your job. Um, the last one is get bookings, make money. <laughs> if, that's it that's that's the foundation of this whole chat is you've got to you've got to keep those bookings coming in you've got to make bank and if there's anything we can do to help help you achieve that because we've been very lucky and we wish we had people kind of telling us things nice and early we're very very happy to share we're around guys we're um we're easy weddings advocates and they get on a fence so the inside vendor page. So if you have any questions for us or any of that, please, please, please post it in there and we'll answer. Um, just quickly, and then Kate just sort of wrapped it up then, but um, uh, the my five points um, are a bit more, um, uh, you know, a bit more personal, a bit more intrinsic. So dream big. So with weddings, there's no, there's no rules <laughs> anymore. There's traditions are slowly getting phased out. Um, and people are just doing whatever they want. They really reflect the couple as an, in, as, you know, as individuals, as well as the couple themselves, like they're, they're so personalized. And I love that. I love that about weddings. Um, and it's, it's different every week and that's the best thing. So if you can assist that by thinking of something 
completely new and completely different um they're gonna go with that they're gonna go yes that you know and you're the vendor for me you know um another thing is contracts make sure you have a contract so important please get someone to look over your contract um guys we do have a contact for that so yeah. if and don't be embarrassed because we found like people you know <laughs> who should have had a contract 20 years ago and still didn't uh, we'll, we can share a basic template with you and then send you to a really good solicitor who's done a special rate. Um, I'm sure also Easy Weddings can send you in the direction of uh, legal help. Um, yeah. Have an agreement, even if it's basic, you need to list what your rights are. You need to look yeah. after yourself and after the couple. So you need a document. Write that down right now. You have to have a contract. You must. Yeah. Um, thanks, Kate. Sorry. <laughs> um, there's also, uh, just overlapping a little bit with Kate, is never stop innovating. Always keep moving forward. You don't want to stagnate in business. That is, you know, a recipe for disaster and for failure. You, you aren't going to then progress. You aren't going to move with the industry. Um, you aren't going to be um, on the cutting edge of, of what's new and what's, uh, what's you know, vibrant and important and trending, you know. Um, so always be innovating, always be thinking of new things um, and new ways to do things. Um, uh, just a little bit of, uh, like, um, advice as well is just know that, not every wedding or not every bad wedding is your fault. Um, I, I always take those bad weddings personally. Sometimes if, if something goes wrong, that's just not in your control. You just weren't expecting it, especially early on when we were, you know, just singing in the corner and just cakes fell, fell over and, you know, things weren't run to time, whatever it is. Um, as, as a small business owner, you take a lot of things very personally. Um, especially when your job, you can't do your job as best as you possibly can. It's just know it's not your fault. Um, and learn find from a way it, to learn, the future. learn from it, and then either implement the thing that you need to improve, or um, just you know, just move on, get through it. The next wedding is is going to be amazing. You know, um, we we've been really really lucky. I think we haven't had a bad wedding for about six or seven years but prior to that the first three years of us navigating our way there were always tough times we didn't understand that a lot of our job is conflict resolution so um assess what your actual job is because we realized we weren't just wedding singers there's a lot to navigate there and a lot to plan for and allow for the second we realized how much of our job was hospitality and customer service we haven't had bad weddings since then so really really um you know if something isn't working really reassess it and look at your offer and look at the weddings you, you're doing yeah um the other thing for as well just the last thing is um never be afraid to ask for help always you know there's so many vendors out there um people like easy weddings that are, are really there to help you make good business decisions they want you to succeed um, not only because they're good people and they actually do care about you as a small business, but if you are succeeding, you're going to pay them more money to help them <laughs> with, their, with their advertising. You know, it's so important. Like everything, you know, the, the wheel turns. That's what that's what we're here to do, you know. Yeah, we, they, they can't have you fail because then they've got no clients. So yeah. these people are here to help you, um, you know, so get as much help as you can. And even if you're like six years in or whatever it is, sometimes you feel it's too late to ask that question you never asked. Just ask it. Just yeah. do yourself a favor. And, you know, if you need to go back on your foundation, do it. Yeah, just and that's do what you got to do. That's a big part of Inside Vendor as well. We, we there's no stupid questions. That's that's what we're we're here to to answer them. Um, if we it, if it's if you think it's a stupid question, there's usually an easy answer. You know? <laughs> so and and it's something that can be fixed very quickly. So um, yeah, thank you very much for thanks so for sticking much everyone. Around. <laughs> thank you so much, Tom and Kate. We it could, was absolutely could. amazing. <laughs> We're, okay. we're really, really looking forward to future Easy Wedding events. You get to come in and meet us and stuff and talk to us, um, yeah. you know, when those things get back on track. So we're thinking that I think uh, one of the members, maybe it was Sarah, was saying uh, looking at uh, kind of early to mid next year doing some more in-person stuff. So we usually show up there. Um, otherwise, you know, you can drop us a message if we can help you with anything. But uh, we really look forward to seeing you all again at another Easy Weddings, either webinar or in person. Wonderful. Thank you so much, guys. And thanks, everyone, for attending. And we'll see you all next week, hopefully, at the same time.
Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank Bye. you very much. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Yeah.